Hello, I'm meteorologist Rob Carlmark, and I work here for ABC 10 based in Northern California. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, a lot of my information and focus will be on Northern California because that's mostly uh, where I work and, and what my concerns are. However, there will be a little bit of Southern California thrown in, thrown in there as well, so you know what's going on uh, with that location. So this is the scene up in a place called Myers. This is right near South Lake Tahoe, but a couple hundred feet up from lake level. And you could see with recent storms, they are absolutely buried. And this is not just one neighborhood. It looks like this everywhere in the high Sierra. So what you're seeing is roughly a season's worth of snowfall. And we're now approaching top 10 and we might be top five after all of this uh, in the incoming days and weeks ahead because we really are looking at continued snowfall for higher elevations, but with one twist. As we get closer to the weekend, it'll be raining in these locations, not snowing, and that is a concern. So the lay of the land is just different now. Everyone can remark about how well their home or their neighborhood drains when it has rain, but folks, it's different now, and water doesn't care about the ground level. It cares about how it's gonna navigate itself with the easiest and lowest path down with this new environment, and that quite often is uh, in places you don't want it to go. Now, as people are snow blowing and digging out, they often have their driveway so they can get in and out of their garage and then a path to the front door of their house. Also, the streets are plowed. Now, if this were at an angle, just imagine now how the water would move. Let's say it's flowing downhill this way and then maybe there's a little incline to the driveway and it's going down, down, right into the garage. Now, this particular home does not have that layout but many will have a brand new scenario that they're just not aware of or thinking about, or maybe they do, and now they have to take action because up high, we're looking at rain for the higher elevations, and that changes everything, including flooding risks for places that are buried in snow. I know it doesn't make sense, but that's what we're talking about. Then down low, this is called the Cosumnes River at Michigan Bar. You might be thinking, where the heck is this? Well, this is the largest undammed river system in Northern California. It essentially goes from the foothills of the Sierra through communities in nearby places like Elk Grove and some other uh, areas nearby. Now, this is an, an undammed river, so basically when it all rains at once or you get snow melt, it spikes very quickly, and that's what we're gonna be looking at in the coming days as it's gonna be getting close to flood level by the time we get to the tail end of the weekend. And it's all connected to, we are in the hot spot, folks. This is the jet stream. This will carry storms as they form in the Pacific and directs where they go. Well, guess what? It's pointed right at California in the coming week, week and a half. Once we get to 10 days out, there's some question if it continues or if it stops. But for the next 10, we are very, really, really confident in this scenario. This is the amount of rain total we could be getting. And once it starts pushing red and yellow, that means we're really looking at the upper limit here of what you can get with these kinds of storms. Red indication, three to five inches of rain. The purple is going to be a couple inches of rain. The blue is about half an inch to an inch. And then the green, very light amounts, if anything at all, for far Southern California. But, you know, along the Central Coast, Highway 1, we're talking about very heavy rain. Rain in far Northern California, which is okay because Trinity, which is one big reservoir in Shasta, they're still down a little bit. So that would be the one benefit of this pattern. But there's not many benefits at all. Let's get, again, get to the specific elevation risks with this new scenario that we have for the next week, week and a half. For the high Sierra, we've got the heavy roofs of snow. So lots of just weight on those roofs. We're already approaching the upper limit just for weight with snow. You throw in water on top of that and it's much heavier. So we have to watch for structural collapses. We've seen that with porches, with sheds, with some homes, with flat roofs, uh, uh, older homes. We've seen that in some areas. We could see more of it. Ice dams, that's when you get water underneath that big layer of snow because underneath, your home, you're heating it. So your attic gets warm, it melts some of that. You get water buildup and it can't exit. It can't drain off. So it starts to seep into the home and then ponding in unusual places. For the low Sierra, we're talking about melting, rapid creek rises and water damage from recently damaged structures due to the amount of snow. And then for the valley, a lot of road ponding, just bad driving. The rivers, the big ones, they're gonna be rising. And then just, you know, let's face it, it's March. People plan things, baseball, t-ball, things like that. All those practices and even games, you'll have to rethink about if they can even happen with the amount of rain that we're going to be, be looking at. We do have a winter storm warning today and tonight for a portion of the Sierra. Southern California, you'll find a good opportunity to uh, dig out. But we've got one more wave that's going to push through. This is going to push through in the middle of the night. So for your local forecast in places like Sacramento, Big Mountain forecast, you're looking at uh, Big Mountain backyard forecast. Maybe a little rain this afternoon, that's about it. It comes back in a bigger way in the middle of the night. 
So this is going to be one last round of steadier rain and increased snow once we get to the middle of the night. Good news, this is 4 o'clock in the morning. It's in and then it's out and then the snow finally leaves. So most of your Wednesday, most of your Thursday, those are the dry days to get ready to make all those preps. A lot of sandbagging going on because of the rain that's incoming. Still could pick up several more inches of snow in the overnight hours before we start to switch over to dry and then a warmer forecast. So again, once this pushes through early Wednesday, we have most of uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Thursday night, it comes in with snow at first and then boom, it switches over to rain. We're talking snow levels, 7,000, maybe 8,000 feet, rain on snow for everybody. And then we're gonna be looking at that continuing for a little bit. It starts to die at the end of the weekend. Our biggest concern not the first one necessarily, but if we get back-to-back -back storms, whatever's high is going higher, and whatever damage or problems we have just extends the amount of time that we're in that scenario going into the beginning of next week.